Warriors Kings tonight from Chase Center at 7 o'clock, exactly two hours from now, the tip-off. Warriors go back-to-back, see if they can get a couple of wins in a row after their experience over the last couple of weeks, which has been awful. A couple quick thoughts on uh, on last night. One of them related to uh, to the late Dayan Milojevic and everything that has sort of unfolded out of that for the franchise. And then I wanted to mention something about Kaminga after last night's game as well. Um, I, 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 look, I, I thought the, um, the, the, the performance, I don't want to call it that, the, the, the whole ceremony that they put together before the game last night was one of the more touching but also hard-to-watch things. I think it's been really fascinating for fans to see the Warriors and the whole NBA community kind of open themselves up and let us in. Because, like, I've said this before when you and I were on the air when this tragedy happened over a week ago. Um, the average NBA fan d- did not know who this was. Like, they, they, they did not know this name. is not the Warriors' lead assistant or anything like that. And so the way the NBA and the Warriors have gone about, and the players even, and Steve Kerr, helping us get to know this person, his family, the imprint that he had globally on the game of basketball was really something. It was really something. So I just wanted to take a moment to mention that because um, your heart goes out to everybody involved, obviously starting with his family, watching his wife sit through this last night was absolutely heart-wrenching. But also, you know, what a special person that, uh, that he was. And uh, and I, I I thought that everybody involved did a really good job of of, of kind of honoring the tragedy, but also allowing the NBA fan in to understand what has just taken place and why it was such an incredibly big deal and difficult loss. Right, because you don't know really any of these assistant coaches in the second row, especially like if we went around the association and I asked you to name assistant coaches on any team, you'd be hard pressed to do it. Because we just don't know, for the most part, these guys. And you mentioned it about all NBA teams, but let alone the Warriors. You know, we talked about this on Monday. You know Ron Adams, he's been here forever. You know Bruce Frazier, Q, we've had him on the show. And then beyond that, you know, Chris DeMarco, you know the name. And maybe you don't know exactly who he is or which one. And as you mentioned it, you get to to Decky and the rest of them. And you never would have known him. And I, I think through the tribute in Serbia and obviously the tribute last night and just hearing the players talk about the impact he made it was great to to be able to to get to know him unfortunately you got to know him after he had passed and it's kind of a rough way to to get to know somebody but we talked to Steve about it with FP and his legacy and him being a three-time MVP of the Adriatic League and you got a chance to watch the tributes and you see him as a player and then you know you you, you see him working with the team as a coach and it really it becomes painful as a fan. You realize you're getting to know somebody after they're already gone. And so you have kind of a weird feeling about it. It's like, oh, this guy's a great player. And then you realize, oh, oh my God, he just passed away. And you see him laughing with the team in video clips. And you think, oh, man, I, I wish I would have gotten to know him. And then it hits you how, how bittersweet it feels for you, somebody who's just you know finally getting to know who this person is. And then you realize these players and these coaches who all – have known him, like Dario Saric, who's known him for years, and the head coach of Toronto, who coached with him and knew him for years, and you realize just how painful it must be for all these other people who have known him and been around him for a long time. The other thing that stood out for me in that game last night was something, it wasn't just Jonathan Kaminga's play, obviously he's fantastic, 11 for 11, it was incredible, he's had a real nice run here in this window where I was like, you know, every game for each individual is information. I think Jonathan has led the team in uh, giving them some information as we approach the trade deadline. But it was something he said after the game. And it just struck me again that Draymond Green is the embodiment of that old saying that both men and women use. Uh, you know, w- women can't live with them, can't live without them. Men can't live with them, can't live without them. Draymond Green. You can't live with him, and you can't live without him. And as the conversation was ongoing with Kaminga last night, 
And he started talking about what has really kind of worked for him and why the light bulb is clicking and what has got him playing the way he's playing. Wouldn't you have it? Who does he point to? Draymond Green. And and I thought that that was incredibly important since we were coming out of a four-week period where almost every voice that, that, that we hear on this station is screaming, Draymond should be gone, the Warriors should be done with him, we're sick of this guy, what is not, he's not worth it anymore, what is it he actually does, and then there's Jonathan Kaminga to put a performance like that together and say the reason I'm developing on the court, for me, what I want to point to and tell you all about what he says to me is Draymond Green. I hope Warrior fans heard that. I, I really do. Because the, the, the idea that Draymond is all Draymond, all selfish, all I'm going to be me and forget everything else, I think has been an inaccurate portrayal the whole time. Yeah, and you could see it in terms of the way he's mentored many of these younger players and even Jordan Poole himself, who called him his big brother up yep. until the point where he was no longer his big brother. But before the incident that happened last year at practice in the preseason, he was somebody who was being mentored by Draymond Green. So the whole expression of can't live with him, can't live without him is very appropriate when it comes to Draymond Green, but it becomes even more maddening when you know Draymond has those incidents where he gets texts, he gets flagrants, he gets suspended, and all the rest of it that hopefully is now largely a thing of the past. And I wonder if the the episode with Decky, the tragic death of the assistant coach, if that doesn't you know allow him some ongoing perspective. And you saw him last night in tears before the game, and Clay Thompson's yeah. in tears, and you know I know for me. It's given me great perspective in terms of this year. And I mentioned this with FP yesterday. I said, you know, not so much just quit on the season, but I'm kind of done with the whole idea of, you know, you got to this or you got to that or, you know, you, you got to figure out something to get for Wiggins. And, you, you know, two, day, two weeks from now, trade deadline, and you got to be a playoff team, and you got to make a run and this and that. And I think now with this season, you look at it, and last night was a great win against an Atlanta team that didn't have Trey Young, and there's going to be more great wins and there's going to be bad losses. There'll be good losses and good wins and bad wins and the rest of it, and they're probably going to wind up being about the team that they've been most of the year. And maybe if we're lucky, you get a playoff series or two. But at the end of the day, I think you look at this year and you realize that the Draymond situation and then the tragic loss of Decky, all these things have led you to a place where a lot of this stuff doesn't matter. Well, I I get what you're saying, and that's a very, very normal sentiment when, when they all go through something like they've just gone through. But let's be honest, that'll come back. I mean, you haven't you haven't lost your drive for, for Warrior basketball. No. And and you, you know what I mean? Like, um the trade deadline is coming. Two weeks it still matters. Today, yeah. It matters. It absolutely matters what they what they do. It matters, but in terms of greater perspective. Well, if, they don't, if they don't make a move in two weeks and if they wind up a team that goes 39 and 43 and they're the 10 seed or the 11 seed and they don't get into the playoffs, it matters. But to me, it's going to matter less in terms of the overall perspective. And we talked about this over the last couple of days about Steve Kerr. And you've mentioned it before. The guy's won four titles. And then you see what he's done over the course of the last eight days navigating this team and this franchise through this un, unspeakable tragedy, and you see what a great speaker, what a statesman, what a leader, what a friend, and all the rest of it. And for me, it just crystallized again how fortunate we are as Warrior fans to have him as the leader of the team. Yeah, you want to win the title. You want to win every game. I get that. And you want all these things for your team. But at the end of it, we're damn lucky to have Steve Kerr as the face of this franchise. Well, I, I mean, amen to that. That's been true all all along. You know, like this has always been uh, bigger than than some of the stuff that, that that we dive into on a day in and day out basis. I didn't like that he, you know, Moody didn't have enough minutes. It's like, okay, what happens when your multi billion dollar organization goes through something like this? Who who do you want 
out front. And I don't mean in terms of PR and who helps all of us fans feel good. Like Steph Curry, I thought through this last week was really good speaking about um, who, who you want uh, to, to, to guide the organization through something like this. And it's clearly a, a, a person like Steve who has been through personal, surprising tragedy, family, himself. And um, so for him to sort of be the conduit, the connection between that family and this team and, and guide his team through this, I think it's all, it, it, it's all appropriate. And, and who knows? I don't want to draw a line that I have no idea exists, but we've spent a year talking about how bad Draymond Green is for the young players on this team. And for Jonathan Kaminga to be playing the way he is and to do it on a night where Draymond started out on the sideline crying, you know, I, I, I just think there's some togetherness there that we've acted like is not there. Um, there are some characteristics of some of these people that we've attached to them that are not true. You know, we've acted like they're not together, um, and, and, and that's why their record is not good. We don't know that. The record might not be good because maybe they're just not that good. But that does not automatically mean that Draymond has been a cancer or that this team is, uh, is, is rotten from the inside out. I thought that was an incredibly important night for the future of this basketball team because all of these players are auditioning to still be a part of the future. And I think we get to a year like this in a trade deadline where we're like angry and dismissive and we forget the fact that there is a very real possibility, if not probability, that both Jonathan Kaminga and Draymond Green are going to be teammates together in this city for a long time, for years to come, multiple years to come. And they do have similar things that are asked of them on the basketball court. And they are front court players. And Jonathan needs him. He needs him. And so I get it. He might get traded in two weeks. I totally, and, and I might be talking about either one of them. Maybe both of them will. I have no idea. But Jonathan's done enough in the last three weeks to make me really hope he stays. And, and, and maybe, just maybe, if he stays, Draymond has to also. Might be the best thing for him. I don't think that uh, they're going to end up trading anybody. And the more I've thought about it over the course of the last, not even just the last week, but going back before the tragedy with Coach Decky, I look at players who they might want to trade, main, mainly Andrew Wiggins, and I don't think that his value is high enough or can get high enough to where you can get enough back for him. And the players that you don't want to trade, players like Jonathan Kaminga, who other teams want you to trade. I think what you've seen from Kaminga over the last month has been eye-popping, eyebrow-raising, and it's been so good. I mean, 11 for 11 is, uh, you know, putting him alongside Chris Mullen for most right. shot attempts without a miss. The fact that he goes 11 for 11 and does what he did last night and plays with such dominance, they don't have that from anybody else. I can't see them trading Jonathan Kaminga. Now, do you look to move... Moses Moody, I mean, I, you could do a Moody and a Wiggins to try to get somebody back, but the more I look at where they are with two weeks to go till the deadline, I just don't see a move that makes sense in terms of getting somebody to help you now. And I do also think that what happened over the last week with the tragedy has brought everyone together, and maybe it's given them a greater sense of just this is us and let's ride with us until the offseason and see how far we can get. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Who knows? I don't, I don't want to speak to their uh, their mentality or how that may sure. have sort of changed their their approach to this whole thing because it does it, it. You know, the last time they played basketball, Dibs, it felt like well, the trade deadline is coming, but it's kind of out there still. Yeah, and then this turned into this what felt like a lengthy period of time with no Warrior basketball, and they come back now with a condensed schedule and the realization that the trade deadline is like right here. Yeah. It, it, it's right here, and people have not been able to see their players play and 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 scout that and, and figure that out, and things are developing behind the scenes for all of these organizations. So I, I don't know. You may well be right. This whole thing may have changed 
their approach. I still would be very surprised if it's a total stand pat. I that that does not feel like this organization to me. I get what you're saying, and uh, I also think that if you want to get aggressive, then you got to look at what you can really do. And to me, getting aggressive would be you're, you're going to trade Andrew Wiggins, and you're going to probably throw in a piece that somebody else would want, maybe a pick as well, and you're going to bring back a, a veteran of some sort, some sort of an expiring vet deal and a player who can help you over the course of two months. And does that deal do enough for you to make you good enough to make to make something happen this year? I, I just don't see it. So, you know. Penny does not want you to trade Wiggins. Yeah. She's had just about enough of that crap. She's Team Christie with that. Oh, man. Yeah. So. Penny weighing in we'll, from the fourth we'll, row. That was awesome. <laughs> Rod Riggins. Rig- <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, Penny from the fourth fun. row. Yeah, it was. All right. Anyway, um, really good stuff. And, and I, I, I wanted to point that out because I just, it stood out to me immediately. You know, it's been two months of what the hell does Draymond do? And the young players are yeah, terrified yeah. of him. And, and here's Kaminga, who's like, you know who talks to me on the court every day and really gets my head straight is Draymond Green. And I'm like, well, hello. You know what I mean? Um, and, and, and it's so Draymond. It's so Draymond. Every single time, as a Warrior fan, you're fed up. He, he does something where you're like, oh, right. But then it's, it goes the other way as well. Every time you're thinking in that indispensable way about Draymond, he does something to drive you up the wall, too. Yeah, for me, it's never been about Draymond and the young players, other than the Jordan Poole incident. I've never really thought about that in terms of things that that bother me about Draymond Green. And, you know, you've heard from everyone that he is a good mentor and the whole Big Brother thing. The things that have bothered me about Draymond Green have been the histrionics and the antics and... I think we're going to reach a point that those things are going to go largely by the wayside. And I know it's a small sample. He's only been back for two games, I believe, he's played since he's come back. And it seems like Draymond is approaching things differently. Only time will tell, but I'm certainly holding out hope that he can just focus on basketball and leave the the other stuff aside. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean, on the down low, kind of a, an interesting off-of-the-bench line for him last night. Five of six from the field, um, and, uh, you know, five rebounds, three assists. Like, he was a team high, plus 19 yesterday in and that yeah, basketball game. Two of three from three. He continues yep. to be the leading three-point shooter on the team, percentage-wise, and he's shooting it better than ever. He's taking the threes that he needs to take, and... Boy, they they sure look good last night, and I know they're back at it again tonight, which second half of a back-to-back, it helps that you're coming off a nine-day break. But I, I think that you know the schedule right now sets up to where you can maybe you know make some moves, make some headway, and, and get back uh, closer toward the top eight here before the break. Do you know who had my absolute favorite total from the three-point line yesterday of all the Warriors? No, who? Jonathan Kaminga. Do you know what he went? I'm looking at it right now. That's Ovo. what I'm talking about, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. 11 of 11, o- o of O. O of O. Go to the hole. You are good at it. You're getting better at it. Con- don't settle. Don't settle. It's so against everything that his repertoire is. Yeah, and it's... It's just all the offense, though. Sometimes you find yourself in the corner and, you know, a shot created must be taken, but you can go through and look at every shot he had, and I'm looking at it right now. NBA.com, one of the cool things, Mark, is you go to the box score and you click on how many makes they had, and you can look at all 11 makes from the player, and I'm looking at his list. Turnaround jumper, fadeaway jumper, finger roll, finger roll, dunk, jump shot, floating bank, Driving layup, dunk, layup, turnaround, all the things you're talking about. And you look at his shot chart, and he's got one shot outside the key. His shot chart, Mark. He's got one shot that comes about 16 feet from the basket. So maybe that's what Draymond was telling him. Yeah. Um, It was good stuff last night.